Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel Hasty Books. I'm Camilla and today I'm bringing you part two of my reading for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. You may have seen part one which was my March reading vlog when I gave you weekly updates on how I was doing with my reading for the long list. In March I read seven of the books from the long list. The long list has 16 titles which means that technically I have nine left to read. So how is my April looking? Well, in total of the list, there's one book that I've mentioned already I'm not going to try to read, which is Black Butterfly, because I just can't find it anywhere. So at the moment, it's kind of at the bottom of my list. But I'm still going to try to read the other eight in April. And we are currently Easter weekend, and we're actually in the Lake District with my in-laws spending the long weekend. It's been really nice. So what have I been up to in the first week or so of April? Well, I've already read two of the eight books that I wanted to read, which is great. I first listened to audiobook for The Dog of the North by Elizabeth McKenzie. This is, this was a weird one. I feel like I enjoyed it well enough. It was quirky and whatever. Don't think it's prize worthy for me. And also sometimes when I was listening to this audiobook, I was like, what is happening? And then at some point the main character describes how she's basically blurting a bunch of stuff to her sister and her sister has this like horrified look listening to her and I was like oh my god I am her sister because I keep just listening and I was just like what is happening but it was a book that was really trying to be quirky too quirky for me so I don't know I didn't really see the point and also I think it touched on some traumas but just not enough for me it didn't go into details enough it just kept talking about Van and about this woman's connection to people that she barely knew and it just I don't know there was something I didn't really connect with so for me again that wasn't a really highlight of the list and then I finished Homesick by Jennifer Croft which is a short book and she's the translator for uh, loads of kind of books that have been I think nominated and winners for the International Booker Prize which is books in translation and this book is very much like about a young girl who discovers languages and to love languages and to what they can you know what she can do with them but I have a little bit of an issue generally with this book where I've heard that it was written in translation to begin with so then obviously the author is a translator so she re either rewrote it or translated it for this which technically shouldn't make it eligible anyway and also technically it first came as a memoir and I think in the US it is marketed as a memoir which also it shouldn't be eligible under that and again even if it was eligible whatever knowing all of this made me feel weird about reading this book because I had issues with some of the things that came up but I was also like wait is this real life or is this fantasy <laughs> I know right so I just I don't know there were some things I was just like I don't know that I can talk about what's happened in this book because some of this stuff must have really happened to the author but again that blurs the line and I'm just like well is this eligible for fiction? To me it just doesn't feel like it should be on this list but I did think it was kind of worthy enough. There's a first part which is um is it called sickness or anyway it's like the first part is about growing up and her sister having um cancer and just a lot of seizures and stuff like that and there was a lot of stuff that was really relatable into her growing up but then I feel there's a real disconnect with the second part which is then her in Europe traveling translating just doing whatever and I was like what's the link here I don't understand and there's just a lot of time jumps and I was just like what is this this doesn't feel like a finished book to me and I feel like there's some pieces that are missing or that she tried to have too short of a book um, and it's rare that I want more of a book, but I feel like this one could have maybe done well with adding some links to all of these kind of steps of the book in these stages. So that was it for the two books that I did finish. I'm currently in the middle of reading Stone Blind by Natalie Hines, which I'm very happy I got my library hold. <laughs> so I'm already almost 20% through that book. I also have a copy of Memphis, but I'm, I've also started which is already so much trauma. Anyway, I'm gonna try. I've also started Demon Copper and The Marriage Portrait. I'm gonna try so hard to read this. I will give you an update next week and how it's going. Hello again. We are Saturday the 15th of April, so about a week later. 
I am currently in Ireland for work, so it's very, uh, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> uh, it's been really, really fun, and I just want to give you a wee update of how my Women's Prize reading is going. So this week, actually on Monday, I was flying over to Ireland. My flight was really delayed, so I ended up finishing Memphis at the airport. Uh, so that was kind of the silver lining of it. Uh, and I actually really, I really enjoyed that book. Um, if anything, I think it was a slightly too short and needed a little bit more meat on the bone. So it's described a bit as a generational kind of saga. So we follow um, three generations of women. And yeah, I thought sometimes it just, I just wanted to hear have a little more, you know, just like for it to be a true saga, I feel like I needed more of a, of like a big feeling, but I thought it was so beautifully written. It was a beautiful homage to Memphis, obviously, that's the name of the, of the book. And I thought it was, you know, a beautiful story um, about three, well, three, four, four women mostly, including a fifth one um, that doesn't have a narration, I believe, but all of them, I thought it was so great to see such a varied portrayal of women in a family. There's a lot of trauma, so there's a lot of child, um, trauma at the beginning, the sexual abuse. And I thought that was really weird um, because later on in the book, the mother brings the daughter back to the house where the perpetrator lives, knowing that. And I feel like that's never really kind of touched on that much, you know, out of, there's like the sheer desperation of running away from abuse herself. I thought it was beautifully done. I highly recommend it. Obviously knowing the trigger warning uh, at the beginning, but yeah, I thought it was excellent. I am also halfway through Stone Blind, and I am actually enjoying it up to now, although sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it feels like I'm reading some sort of fan fiction about Greek mythology, and that's what's weird about writing so casually about, like, mythology. I find it very bizarre when things are really said super casual, super modern, and you're just like, that doesn't fit with my view of it. So that's definitely something I'm not enjoying up to now. But the overall story, I really, I do love that. And um, especially like, like the focus on the kind of female characters and all of their roles and their oppression by the kind of the male gods or the men on earth. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's interesting up to now. And I hopefully... By next week when I come back with my last update, it will be my last because next weekend is just a couple days before the shortest announcement. I'm going to try to obviously finish John Boyne. I'm almost a third of the way through Demon Copperhead, so I will try to finish that one as well. Hopefully I'll finish that when I get back to you. Um, I had an audiobook from The Marriage Portrait and that was quickly taken away by script. I don't know why. So a bit annoyed by that. I don't think I'll be able to finish reading the actual physical copy in the next week. So I don't know that I'll be able to finish that. I also have a copy of Glory, but obviously I'll, I'll focus on the marriage portrait first. So maybe Glory will have to wait if it's shortlisted. We'll see. And I'm getting the audiobook for I'm a fan just this week. So I'm definitely going to be reading that, listening to that. So kind of that's the, the end of the of, of the long list and of April. We shall see how I get on. I will get back to you shortly with more updates and hopefully reviews. Hello. Okay, I'm back in Scotland as well. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind of a month, hasn't it? Um, this is my last update because the announcement is in a few days and I've kind of come to the conclusion, the obvious conclusion, that I will not be able to finish any of the books I currently am reading. Which means that I have read 13 out of the 16 books that were longlisted ahead of the shortlist. Um, I will continue to read the two books I currently have, The Marriage Portrait by Ma Maggie O'Farrell and Glory by No Valid Um Yeah, I'll just finish reading them, even if they don't get shortlisted. But I want to give you my final thoughts on the three books that I finished this week. And then, you know, I might do a review later on of the last two books, but most likely I'm going to finish them in May. So, yeah. So the first book that I finished this week was I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. 
I listened to the audiobook of that and it's very short so it didn't take very long. I think I said I listened to it in like one sitting. It was actually really good and my thoughts throughout the whole thing were is this cursed bread but in modern times? <laughs> I think to me there are so many of the similar themes explored in this book. One, you have obviously an obsession with another woman. You have someone trying to sleep with someone that they're kind of obsessed with and they kind of want to be with, but not really. Really weird. Yeah, I just thought like this desire, this longing, this envy was just like really reminiscent of that. I really enjoyed though the modern characteristics of this book, obviously very relatable on a lot of things, especially to me, like the whole thing about being a writer and being like, oh, we write about, you know, belonging, not belonging, belonging between two places, not belonging in two places. And I was just like, mm, I really feel that one. <laughs> Like, in the concept of it, obviously, again, it's a book full of characters that I do not like and do not root for and frankly do not care about, but I just like the themes of it explored and I just like the way that Sheena Patel, um, I guess, use the language and the um, different uh, chapters or like sections to build. So I think that was really good. The second book that I finished this week was... Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This was a kind of a meh book for me. So ahead of it being even long listed, I knew that this wasn't a book for me. I looked at it, I read what it was sort of about, and I was like, I don't really want to read this. But I read it because I've been I've been committed to reading for the long list. So this was one, I listened to the audiobook and I think that made it probably a little bit easier to get through it for me. I think it was an audiobook that I kept being like, oh, I don't want to go back to it. And usually like when I'm in a book, you know, I'm kind of pulled through, but I have noticed that quite a lot of the books in this long list, I've just been like, it's been a slog to get through some of them and Demon Copperhead was included in that. I thought it was really good though. I think, I think like objectively, I think it's a good book. But I just know it wasn't for me and there's just like things about it that I just didn't enjoy. I don't really enjoy, again, like the themes, it's like drugs and stuff like that. And that's the main thing that this book is about. I have never read David Copperfield or seen a movie or know anything about that. So I didn't know what to expect, except loads of people have been saying how miserable it is. So I knew that I could expect like a series of unfortunate events, basically. So that's kind of what I was expecting. And that's what I got, let's be honest. From beginning to end. Um, I did like, like, as I've said, some of the observation that Barbara Kingsolver made throughout this book I thought was really good and I really really appreciated that. To me it feels like this book was trying to be Donna Tart level of epic kind of storytelling and I have never read Barbara Kingsolver before so I can't tell you if this is wrong, maybe you can tell me if this is wrong and you might, you know, I've not read a lacuna, which I know has won the Women's Prize before. I don't know what it's about. I don't know really much about her kind of story and her storytelling as well. But I just know that this wasn't for me and yeah, I read it. Yep. <laughs> and finally, the third book that I finished literally this morning was Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. So this is a Greek mythology retelling. We've been getting so many of these recently and I'm I'm not into it. I have to be completely honest. It's not a genre of, of books that I've enjoyed. I read The Song of Achilles a couple of years ago because of booktube and I did not really enjoy it. I would still give a chance to A Thousand Ships, I think, um, by, I think, believe it's also by Haynes. But this one was just a little bit, again, it was alright. It was good. I don't know if there's anything else to it for me. Um, what I thought generally was that I thought it was like a great ensemble piece. Obviously, we get the storyline of Medusa, which I thought was going to be a central character. And I didn't really feel like it was, except for the ending where we get her voice more, which is weird because, spoiler alert, she's dead. Um... But I think throughout the whole, we got a lot more of the voices of the men who were doing terrible things than I expected. But I feel like probably the the aim was to have Medusa and Athen uh, as the um, 
main characters. I think they're the ones whose voices or that we go back the most. And as I said, I think in the previous recording, is that I think it, it is about basically, it is, it's trying to be quite feminist, obviously, and it is giving a voice to these characters that we've, I mean, I, mean, I had never really heard before. I read the, the Medusa retelling by Jesse Burton a couple years ago or last year, whenever that was. And I actually really enjoyed that. And I feel like I enjoyed Stoneblind a little bit less. I think it's because the voice, it was all very diluted. There was so much going on, so many storylines, and they're all weaved in, like they're all intertwined. And I really, I did enjoy that. But I feel like it, the effect of the Medusa storyline was definitely watered down by everything else, even though it built up on the world and the consequences uh, and the series of again, unfortunate events that happened to lead us there. Also, I've mentioned this before as well, I thought it was really casual the way that it was written, which I think is super accessible, so I think that's great, but also sometimes it felt way too much like BRB, you know, and it's like, mm, these are Greek gods, <laughs> that felt weird. But I like that a lot of these new retelling or modern retellings of Greek myths have been a lot more accessible and a lot more, um, I guess, e just easier for the average person to kind of relate to and read and kind of hopefully appreci appreciate. So generally, I think I'm glad that I read it, but I knew, again, because of the sort of story that it was trying to say that I wasn't totally into it. But I think I still... I gave three stars to Dean Copperhead and to Stoneblind because to me, they were books, they were good books. Objectively, I think they were good books, but also I just didn't have that big of a connection with them. They didn't make me go like, oh my God, so yeah, so that's kind of my general mood. Um, I, yeah, so I've read 13 of the 16 books. I think it's been a really great challenge to read along for the, um, for you know, between the longest announcement and the shortest announcement. Although I've had a lot going on, so I feel like I haven't been able, I think I could have finished if everything had gone in my favor. I think I could have finished uh, if, you know, the loans had come in, if I wasn't traveling so much, but life, you know, life happens and I've enjoyed my months of March and April. I've done so much actually. I'm really, really pleased with myself. And I'm actually really pleased that I read 13 of the 16 books. That was really cool. Hello again. I know in my last two bits of video, I said that this was gonna be the last bit, but you know, I thought I would finish it the month off with the last update. We're April 30th, so how has my month finished, you know, with my Women's Prize for Fiction reading? As you may know, a couple of days ago, they announced the shortlist, which was a shock for some of us. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've made some decisions based on that for the last three books on the list that I hadn't finished. So I was on read 14, which is... The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. I decided that I'm going to try to finish this one. Obviously, it's shortlisted, so still working on it. But this week, I've been taking it really chill. Like, I'm just, you know, I want to be kind to myself and enjoy myself. Needed the break from the Women's Prize a little bit. <laughs> I started Lord of the Rings, actually. But yeah, so I will finish this one. I'm getting the audiobook version on Tuesday. Then we're off on holiday on Wednesday. So I think I might listen to audiobook while on holiday and not bring this with me <laughs> so we'll see how far i get and i'll see when we're back i can go back to reading and then listening so yeah that'll be nice the 15th book for me to read on this long list was glory by novel Bulweo. i said in the last wee bit of this video that i was going to read this regardless of if it's shortlist or not but i started it it wasn't really my jam and it hasn't been shortlisted so basically because it's not really doing it for me and I don't need to review it, then I think I'm just going to return it to the library because, you know, life is too short. I will read something else. But yeah, I think that will be the only one that I DNF from the whole long list. Because the last book on this list, number 16, which I had kind of scratched off because I haven't been able to find it, is Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris. Well, it has been a short list, <laughs> so I will have to try to find it. I did see that it's coming out on audiobook on Audible in mid-May. So I think I may have to, to get it there because I can't find anywhere else. It's like my library doesn't know this book exists. 
I've requested it, but by the time that it gets acquired, if they acquire it, I think uh, there's no way I'm getting it before the winter announcement in June. So I decided I'm just going to get on Audible and listen to it and, you know, later in May. Hopefully I'll have time before the winter announcement, which I think is mid-June, so hopefully plenty of time. And yeah, so this will be like the end of reading the long list slash short list. I'm planning on reading the entire short list uh, with, you know, finishing the marriage portrait and then reading Black Butterflies. So yeah, it's kind of like toward the end of my journey of, of reading The Woman's Prize and following it this year. I will get back to you probably in early June when I finish reading the short list with some predictions, with some hopes and, you know, probably a lot more thoughts about these books. I might re revisit Fire Rush, so we'll see. But I will be back soon. Thanks for everyone who's been following me through this journey. It's been really fun and weird. <laughs> so yeah, it's been it's been really good to kind of get out of my comfort zone as well, reading these books. Sometimes not for the better, sometimes for the better. So a journey of ups and downs. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more Women's Prize for Fiction Thoughts very soon. So until next time, and hey, see you back. Bye.